So we're just having a bit of a bit of a tea break then, and uh, wanted to have a look in the holes. And Ashman's seen that this one here's just all the crud around the outside. There's started falling in. So uh, I'm going to try and very carefully get this out without pushing it down inside the hole. Right, so we we got it out. Um, and what it was, it's this little piece of Bakelite here. And uh, if, if you guys have owned a anywhere from a VR Commodore, VS, we had a VS, we had a VN and a VS. Uh, you know, this is the VT, I guess. Um, the alternators on these things, this cable here, uh, this thing gets loose and heats this cable up here. And this Bakelite here eventually just disintegrates and that's what's fallen down there. And then obviously when I've taken the um, fuel injector out, it's just falling in the hole. <clears throat> anyway, this is a makeshift because it, bur it burns all the wiring harness. And I changed one on the VS once, it took me all, all day. So we're going to do that again. Anyway, so uh, I might just get the vacuum and just suck, suck some of that muck out of there because that's really dirty, that one. I might just so stick it over. We just sort of did a, a, a trial run of getting this, the fuel rail back in. Whether it's going to be easy to put the injectors in the, the hole first and then put the fuel rail back in. But one of the things I wanted to point out, the importance of disconnecting the battery terminals, is we've got all this fuel here. This alternator here, the back end, I haven't got the rubber cap back on the back side of it. So that's exposed. That's straight to the battery, which is very dangerous. Shouldn't have that really. Um, now, while I was putting this back in, I, ba I basically touching the ground of the engine and then on there, that's going to weld onto there and I'm going to have a, a fire, which might not be a bad thing for this car, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, very important to disconnect the battery. I know it's a pain in the butt because you've got to get your radio codes program back in. Um, <clears throat> I've got an aftermarket radio, so just the, the time goes off and the stations disappear so but yeah look we're going to stick the we're going to try stick the injectors in first and then put the fuel rail on put the clips in see how it goes so all right, all right so some of you might be wondering about why i kept that fuel out of there scuddy kilmer from scuddykilmer.com uh, suggested that we uh, lubricate these rings so it's really just dipping the, the, the rings in the in the ends and that's that's really it um, he reckons that you get a better seal so they just push down inside there we'll do another one while we come around this side Ash This one goes in the hole and just push down inside there like that, that's it. Clips in. A few on there. That one push down in there. That's it, they're pushed in. Hopefully they're sealed. We'll do the same on this side. So we're uh, doing this side now, the driver's side. And Look, as I'm putting these in, uh, these ones actually sit kind of on an angle, but um, I, can, I can feel there's some grit and stuff in there, and I don't know whether I should have cleaned that out and how I would have cleaned that out, but um, if anyone's got some suggestions, <coughs> I would have happily, happily taken them. Alright, so they're all in. So it seems like... This side is sort of back that way, and this side is shooting that way. So, which makes sense because if you look at the fuel rail, these ones are back right that way, and these here are that way. So, all right, let's get this puppy in. Just sort of take your time. Should just drop in there. No major. There we go. So you've got these little um, bolts that line up, and now we've really just got to guide these. A few lines driving me nuts. 
guide the um, the tops there down on top of the, the fuel injectors and they'll seat in. So I'll push this side on. I think that was it, wasn't it? Okay, well I guess that's what that clip's for. And this side, these are all on. Yep. Although it doesn't look like it's pushed down, does it? Oh, there we go. These actually push in. There we go. They actually push in like they did into the block, into the intake. They push down. Look, I think that's in. I think we're in. So, put these. All right, so, we've got them in, got the fuel rail on. I, I think in hindsight, I should have put the injectors into the fuel rail and then jiggled it in. I have a feeling that maybe I'll have some, some leaking problems, but um, we'll see. Uh, the clips that I took off, you've got to stick in from behind, which is probably one of the reasons why we would have done that <coughs> before we put the put them in, you know, with my big gigantor fingers trying to get these things back here. It's a bit of a bit of a nightmare. Get out. Alright, so we got the uh, got those clips on. I'm just going to tighten up these bolts. <coughs> um, I have a feeling that I'm going to have some leaks, just because I'm a, I've never done this before. And I think you're supposed to put them in the rail first, and then put them in the car. And I probably should have cleaned. The holes that they came out of somehow. I'm not sure how. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to do these up. So I'm just bolting the fuel rail back on. Um, get it all in there. And, um, so we just spent all that time <laughs> trying to get this little bolt. This little nut that fell down behind the supercharger out. It's fun. So anyway, I don't have a magnet thingy. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is jam this nut into the socket just with this little bit of plastic. Just put that on there just to make it a little bit tight. So it kind of sits in there by itself. So I'll just screw that on. And a little bit of plastic should easy to pull out yep. Along, the longies just grab that little bit of plastic there he is recycling Now again, there's probably some or special order you're supposed to do this in. Ooh, that's not good. Anyway, I don't know what the actual tension is supposed to be, but all right. So things to do when I plug the injectors back in. There's clipping. Put that 
wiring harness back in. Clip these ones back in. Going to Canberra tomorrow. So I really hope this fixes the problem. I really do. Yeah, it's clipped in. Clip that back on the way. Right. Fuel regulator vacuum hose back on. Now we can't forget this one. Left, I've got to put this alternator brace back on. I haven't lost the bolts that are here, so I drop them. I think that was a 10 mil, it was a 13 mil one, so I'll do this 10 mil one first. Alright. So, just gotta hook the fuel lines back up. And then, probably these are marked front and rear, so you can't really get them wrong. I'm assuming they just click back in, yeah, that's it, click, click, alright. And that's it. Alright, so we've got to put the fuel pump relay back in. to connect the battery back up. Alright, so the one thing I like to do before I start the car is just check that I don't have any tools, you know, like you'll notice the torch is sitting there on top of the supercharger snout, on top of the coil pack there. That's probably something I should move. Um, so let's check, make sure all the tools, sockets, you know, all that stuff. Alright. I'm very interested to see what happens. Boom! running a hundred times better. Um, that might sound funny because it's still a little rough but it would have stalled by now. Seriously the old ones would have stalled so uh, um, 
Yeah, well, it will take for a test drive. Open it up a bit, get the stupid charge going. And, um, yeah, the test will be tomorrow morning when I get a camera, it's cold. It actually starts up and, I mean, I can even smell it. It's not as rich as it normally is when it starts, so that's good. So, uh, just giving it a bit of a, just a quick start and idle and seems to be, seems to be good, I'm pretty happy. Um, what I'm going to do is just keep an eye on, you know, the fuel injectors, see if they're leaking. Uh, it doesn't look like they are, it doesn't smell like any of them are leaking. Um, but, um, you know, I just keep an eye on it. So, I, I appreciate some comments, there's something I could have done better from some of the experts out there, but, um, this car is pretty much new now. Uh, what's left to go on it is uh, it's probably probably needs a gearbox, um, and this fan here is stuffed. I'll have to get a new fan. It doesn't doesn't kick in, and I get an engine warning light <coughs> that comes on. So you, what I do is put the air conditioning on, which kicks that big one in. I want to get a, an upgrade kit for this. Shrink it down, get some more herbs out of it. In fact, my wife's VY uh, wagon, standard stock standard wagon, goes better than this thing. So hopefully, the fuel injectors are going to fix that. So yeah, cool. Thanks, mate. Right, so this is the last part of the video. Go for a test drive. This is idling. Got the air conditioning on, it's cold. It's not even skipping a beat. It's fantastic. Alright, here we go. power button on then but I don't. Fantastic. It's interesting to see the, um, what sort of fuel mileage I get now as well. Around town I was getting about 13, 13 and a half litres per 100 k's. Um, it's just smoother, acceleration smoother. So many speed humps here in Rio. See what else is really funny is my uh, distance to empty has gone from 450 up to 560. I don't know if that's because I've disconnected the battery and the computer got reset or whatever, but I've got about three quarters of a tank of. Um, 98 um, octane BP, which always works better with this car. Although I do run on E10 sometimes, just um, you know, it doesn't have to get up and go, but it still runs. It's not, not like it's a dog, 